Greetings. In the name of Christ, it is good to be with you on this beautiful morning. I have a note here to myself that I did not introduce myself to you last time. My name is Christy Garner. I'm pastor. Uh, I'm a buddy of Leo's, and while he is out taking and being with his family with the death of his mother, I get the privilege of coming and being with you. And today is even a special day on top of that. It is the first Sunday in Lent. And believe it or not, Lent means spring. Hmm. <laughs> even with the cold snap. But what that really means for us is it's that new growth that comes as we journey to the cross, but also grow as disciples. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I am so glad to be here with you, to journey along with you. So we're going to start with the call to worship. I'm going to, with, thank you. Thank you very much. Please join me in the call to worship. Welcome to Lenten worship. Colors shift, marking this sacred time. May we notice these changes, the hues of penitence surrounding us. Let us reflect on humanity's complexities marked by ashes, reminding us of our mortality. Lent calls us to introspection, to examine our loves, fears, and actions. Let us engage fully, putting our whole selves into this journey of faith. May we embrace the dance of transformation and open ourselves to God's spirit. Amen. Good morning, Bear Creek. Today's opening hymn is number 73, O Worship the King, verses 1, 4, and 5. O worship the King, O glorious above, O gratefully sing God's power and God's love, our shield and defender, the Ancient of Days, pavilion in splendor and girded with praise, thy bounty. It breathes in the air, it shines in the light, it streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail, in the Trust nor find thee to fail, and thy mercies how tender, how firm to the end, our maker, defender, redeemer, and friend. All right, everybody, you can take a seat. I remembered that this time. Um, and I'm going to stand over here just so that I can see y'all. Uh, not in, Oh, it's not even helping, so I guess I'm going to quit. Uh, they're trying to get out of the sun, and it's just not working. Uh, so, uh, like always, all of these announcements are going to be in the newsletter and uh, on our calendar on our website. So if you miss anything, uh, if you don't see anything, that's the best place to go get all the information you need. Uh, I'm going to highlight a handful here. So the first is the church office will be closed on Monday for President's Day. Um, the second is that uh, you may see that we have some flowers on the chancel this morning. We don't always have those. We want to highlight those. We want to thank uh, Bill and Ellen Clark. And uh, this is actually flowers from their 40th anniversary. So they uh, blessed us with their flowers from that. Um, and congratulations to y'all. Um, 
And thank you so much. Um, also, I wanted to give a big shout out to everyone who participated in the pancake dinner um, for Shrove Tuesday. It was a lot of fun. Everybody had a great time. All of the groups that brought their toppings and just made it a wonderful time for our church and our community. Um, and big shout out to the United Disciples class for winning best toppings this year. So if you uh, did not, yeah, give them a round of applause, yes. And so uh, if you did not get a chance to uh, taste that, I highly recommend you go harass them, find out everything that they did so that you could try and re replicate it at home. And then maybe you can come back next year and uh, take that title from them. So um, it was a wonderful time. Thank you all again, everyone who volunteered. Um, and then a few other announcements. Obviously, with the start of Lent, we're going to be starting a lot of uh, uh, different Bible studies. So check with your... Uh, class leaders, whether that's your Sunday school class or your weekday Bible studies, um, all of them are, many of our classes are going to be starting these new groups. Um, so find out what materials you need, but now we're starting today. So for instance, a lot of Sunday school classes are actually going to be starting that today. So find out from your Sunday school um, teacher leaders uh, what's going on there. I know that our Tuesday class, um, the, uh, the Bible Cafe is also going to be doing a new one. So yeah, just check with your groups and we'll be starting those Lent studies here uh, this week. Um, stay tuned for all of the events that we have uh, during Lent season. So we have our Holy Week events uh, starting on March 24th um, with uh, Psalm, uh, uh, Palm Sunday, rather, um, and all of those wonderful activities happening then. Uh, let's see. If you missed, um, if you did not get to participate in our uh, youth fundraising event, uh, you still can participate, and that's through donations. So they still uh, are accepting donations to be able to help support that ministry uh, and cause. So if you have the opportunity to do that, thank you so much for everyone who helped out with the Mesa event. Um, I believe that was, I don't even know when, was Super Bowl Sunday last week? So yeah, uh, last week when they did that, um, it was a, a great turnout. The community did amazing things. They actually were able to raise over 5,500 pounds of food for our community uh, and the surrounding area. And so those that are in need, um, that was just a, a huge blessing for them. So thank you so much to our congregation as well as the community for coming together to participate in that. Um, uh, that really, uh, we have, and I'm gonna, and this will be my last one, sorry, there's just a lot going on at this time of the year. Um, Spruce Up Sunday, March 23rd. So calling everybody from around the congregation to come out and help us, make sure that the campus is beautiful, ready for spring, um, cleaned up after uh, what was just a random winter, uh, and so we'll be able to get out here, clean up some of the shrubs and the bushes, make sure all the trash is up so that we can present ourselves as well as we can for our community and for ourselves. So um, that's it for me for now. So what I want y'all, what I want y'all to do is I want y'all to stand up, say hi to somebody that you haven't seen in a while, maybe somebody that you've never seen. Greet them, make sure they feel welcome. Thank y'all. I did have two more little uh, 
announcements that I wanted to say just real quick before we move into the rest of the service. I know I'm forgetful, um, but these are great. So the elevator is now working in, uh, in the Family Life Center. So that's awesome. And then uh, Hebrews is making coffees and fancy coffees are currently our espresso. Uh, es- espresso machine is broken, but we can still make fancy coffees over there. So if you have some time after the service in between services and want to go over there and get some fancy coffees, um, they are also still doing that. Just wanted to those two things out there. So elevator and fancy coffees. Please remain standing and join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. It's prayer time at Bear Creek. May we corporately pray, oh, please be seated, I'm sorry. May we corporately pray for all those listed in the prayer pages, and now hear the prayers of the people. Lord God, on this first Sunday in Lent, we remember the trials and temptations of your son, Jesus Christ, in his journey through the wilderness and how he triumphed over all. In our prayers, we think of the difficult journeys in life encountered by so many people in the world. We pray that in their different times of need, They may find discernment to see their way ahead and strength to overcome whatever problems they face. We pray that faith may be deepened in this period of Lent and all may walk in the light of the Lord. We pray for the church of which we are members and thank you for the light it provides for our journeys ahead. We pray for those who lead us in worship and for all those who enable others to know that light in their lives. We pray for each other that we may each respond to the challenges that the time of Lent presents to us. We pray for each other that we may respond to the challenges that the time of land presents. Help us to be able to look to, at ourselves and to recognize our failings, our inadequacies, and the need for your presence in our journey of life. We pray for the family of the church that we may experience a sense of belonging to you and each other. Bind us together, Lord, as a family so that we can travel along life's journey, helping and supporting one another, overcoming together all the trials and temptations that confront us daily. Today, we remember especially that you turn our darkness into light. In your light shall we see light. In Jesus Christ we pray, and when we, may we all pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Let's see what Tim means. Am I on? Excellent. 
I'm Nancy Kralik, and it's time for the offering. Please place your offering in the offering tray as it's passed. You can also give electronically, QR code on the website of Bear Creek, or you can text GIVE to 281-377-3665. Let's go to prayer. In our giving, hear our heartfelt gratitude for all that you are and all that we have. Bless these gifts for your mission in the world. Bless these gifts for the good that we can provide our community. And bless the other gifts we bring to your mission. In Jesus' name, amen. As Pastor Leo would say, smile when you give.
Please remain standing for the scripture this morning. Scripture is Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Yes, you're right. And if you were paying attention a couple of weeks ago when I preached, it's almost not quite the same passage. As a lectionary preacher, this happens every once in a while, but it does remind me of the seminary student, the brand new one who just graduated from seminary. He got to his first appointment, preached his first sermon, love God, love neighbor. All went well. The congregation was amazed. The next week, he stood up and preached his second sermon, Love God, Love Neighbor. The congregation got a little restless in that he preached the same thing. But, he gave, but they all gave him the benefit of the doubt. After all, he was young and enthusiastic, and it was a good sermon. So the third week came, and he stood up in the pulpit and preached Love God, love neighbor. Now there was a ruckus in the congregation. After all, what were we paying him there for, right? One, the same sermon, three weeks in a row. So the head of SPRC, the pillar of the church, came up to him after church and said, you have preached love God, love neighbor sermon three weeks in a row. And to that, the young minister said, well, when we get that right, we'll move on. <laughs> yes, it's almost the same gospel scripture that I was here just a few weeks ago, but it's also different, is it not? Because it's Lent. Look around, it's, it's different. We have our purple paraments. Our colors are different. We're, we've moved from our green epiphany, looking for those aha moments, to our purple paraments in our journey with Jesus to the cross. And I've got to say, there's an intentionality about Lent. Just a few days ago, Ash Wednesday, Pastor Leo made one of those little smudges on your forehead, and the words were uttered, remember that you are dust, and to dust you will return. As it, was my, as it is my custom on Ash Wednesday, this is the day I reflect on, well, being human. And my conclusion is... It's really hard to be human. And I do feel when I make broad statements like that, I feel like I've just started one of Scott Peck's book where the first line is, life is difficult. Once you get that figured out, everything else is easy. Now, I don't know if you have given up anything for Lent or if you're going to do anything extra for Lent but the truth of the matter is Ash Wednesday starts Lent off with kind of a conundrum and whether you are Lutheran or United Methodist or Catholic or Presbyterian the gospel reading for Ash Wednesday is always Matthew 6, 5 through 8. And Jesus starts us off right here in those red letters. 
And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you're praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because they're many words. Don't be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. And then what do we immediately do? We say some more prayers, and then we smear ashes on our foreheads and walk around the rest of the day with this outward invisible sign saying, I'm human. We might as well have one of those blinking open signs on our forehead saying, see me, Jesus, I'm right here, see me, see me. All the while, we're also trying to hide those parts that we don't want others to see, like our hiccups, or our idiosyncrasies, or our pet peeves, those passions and our dreams. But they're all out there in that little smudge. And I'm going to say it again, it's hard being human. Lent is that time that gives us space for looking in, that introspection, looking at our inside parts, our relationships with ourselves, our relationship with God. After all, it is love God, love neighbor as yourself. We have to know and understand and internalize that we are love too. It's at the very core of us is love, folks. And if we don't recognize that and internalize that, it can all fall apart really easy. And on the other side of introspection, we have to look out, right? At the relationships of, well, just about everything else in the world. Our families, our friends, our work, our co-workers, school, food, drink, shopping, TV. Maybe we need to look at how we spend our time in general, how we live out in the world. All of these and more are we, where we get the ideas of what we need to do for Lent or what we need to give up for Lent. These little tokens of, of things that we do, the relationships of our eyes tell us what we need to give up possibly or what we need to take on additionally. Okay, now, I'm fairly certain that none of you put dancing on your I give up dancing for Lent list. Okay, I'm fairly certain. So, oh dear. All right, you're going to sing with me, okay? Put your right arm in, take your right arm out, put your right arm in, and shake it all about. Turn your pokey pokey and you turn yourself about. That's what it's all about. Okay, come on. Put your left arm in, take your left arm out. Put your left arm in and you shake it all about. Do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself about. That's what it's all about. Okay, all right. You put your right foot in, you take your right foot out. You put your left foot in, you take your left foot out. But here's the thing, folks. What's the end? You put your whole self in and you take your whole self out. You put your whole self in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey, you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Folks, I'm here to tell you, Lent is kind of, of hokey pokey. You can't just put your left hand in or your right foot in. You have to t put your whole self in. That's why we give something up or take something on new to make Lent feel differently from every other normal every day, something to nudge us to be better disciples and better humans. 
The truth of the matter is what's more mundane than life itself? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner without a little dance. It's really just breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Now, I have to admit my Ash Wednesday experience was fraught with, with lots of humanness, okay? I don't know why, but I began reading last year's journal. I guess I needed to keep up on my... Uh, my uh, snooze but anyway I went ahead and read it and what I wrote for the question of what it meant to be human and so I read my journal and it came up that I had this schedule that I was going to do for Ash Wednesday I had an eye doctor's appointment I had a haircut appointment and you know what's more important human than going to the eye doctor and getting your hair cut, right? Well, after these two appointments, I had this grand idea that I was going to go walk a labyrinth and then find an Ash Wednesday service specifically that I was going to be a visitor. So I wasn't going to get to know anybody in the service. And this day was planned. I had it all planned out. I had human tasks that I was going to do, and I had some divine sparks that I was going to participate in. And I was good with this. I was ready to go. I had a picture of what I wanted to happen. This was going to be my Ash Wednesday experience. Isn't that what we do is we plan our days and our weeks and our months. We plan our vacations and our vocations. We plan trips to the grocery store. We plan big things and little things and small things. We plan. That's a very human thing to do. Think about your last vacation. You dreamed where you wanted to go. You made an itinerary. You packed. You went. You saw the sights, rode the merry-go-round, Ferris wheel, maybe the roller coaster loop-de-loop. Maybe you sat on a beach or slid down a mountain. But wherever you, when you came back from wherever, what did you have? Dirty laundry, trinkets, and pictures. Now, do those pictures match the expectations of the trip? I don't know. Looking at my TV habits, I've concluded that I'm addicted to transformation, which I think goes along with making disciples for the transformation of the world, right? Well, my queue is full of shows like the British Baking Championship. I don't know if you've caught that one, but... It is home bakers. These are not professional chefs. They're novices. And they have three challenges to go through. And the first one, they get to practice. And they have a picture of their mind of what their cake or their pastry is to look at. And they give it to the cue card people, and they're supposed to draw it. I can tell you that sometimes their plan A doesn't look like the cue card. But then it gets worse. The second challenge is a technical challenge. This is to make what the judges not only want them to make, but it has to look like the judges that's the technical. And they're given very few directions. And they get judged that it looks exactly like the judges. I feel their pain. (laughs) But not only both baking shows, there's the home improvement shows. I love the home improvement. I love to see the transformation of probably a structure that should be torn down, made into a beautiful living space. You too can have a brand new context in 30 minutes, right? I've heard that the show Yellowstone was about to release its final season. I don't know if I would recommend it to you or not, but the prequel to it is 
quite an interesting story. It's the story before the story. Kevin Costner doesn't just fall from the sky and end up in Montana. 1883 is the show about his ancestors, his family, and, and a group of cowboys and some German immigrants, and they're all packed in their covered wagons headed to Oregon. And the trip through this wilderness was fraught with dysentery, fighting within themselves, Indians, bandits, weather, good weather, bad weather, snow, rain, snakes, bugs, just about anything that you can imagine, this little group experienced it. It's like the old hee-haw adage, if they don't have bad luck, they have no luck at all. Okay? But as I'm watching, I get caught up in the relationships between all of the characters, how the cowboys and the immigrants start working together to make it work, and the family members. And what comes to mind was the singer and songwriter Ditto's lyrics, no love without freedom, no freedom without love. Because it's this freedom to take on a... a adventure into the wilderness not just from their selves but for their generations to come because in about episode number seven or so the mother and the daughter are having this conversation about what the dreams are the daughter asks mom what do you dream about and she says a roof with the four of us under it See, we have these pictures and plans in our minds and what they're to look like. And so often I say as a pastor and something that I have to remind myself often is that release is the hardest love to practice. I'll say that again. Release is the hardest love to practice. Folks, we have to let go of the outcome. Release can help us recenter when we're anxious. We can recenter in who we are, and we can recenter into whose we are. And we recenter in love. Real quick, I'm going to say that detaching from the outcome doesn't mean that we're not invested or care about the outcome. It means that we're not going to try and force an outcome that may or may not meant be meant to be. It means that we will fully invest and fully show up knowing that we have often have little control over what will ultimately happen. Here's the paradox to this, is that when we're able to let go and release the outcome, we feel freer to show up as our authentic self. And this, my friends, is Jesus in our story today and all through the Lenten season. Hear those words. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was with the wild beast for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. He didn't know what was going to happen at his baptism. He didn't pack his bags for a trip into the desert. He didn't anticipate his baptism experience. He had this experience, this wow experience in the Jordan River, and he was moved into the place to go and to discern and to think about and pray. He had no idea of what the outcome was going to be. He had no idea of what he was going to encounter, but he did know whose he was. He did have a deep, abiding love and faith for God, 
Folks, he put his whole self in. And the rest of his life was the outcome. When I pray or meditate or center myself, if I have preconceived ideas of what I should, I should feel calm, I should be centered, I should be closer to God, it hampers my experience. I may feel like I failed when it doesn't happen. If instead I let the experience be what it needs to be over time, I will find that my prayer life gradually deepens and matures. So here's the deal. More often than not, those British Baker Championship folks, they fail. But the relationships between the contestants grows out of love and their passion for baking, but also for one another. You can see the judges crying when they're telling the contestants that they have to leave the tent. And I like to think that the home improvement shows are less about the home and more about making a place for life to happen. Also, I think that beyond the trinkets and the photos and the t-shirts and the dirty laundry, vacations truly do bring families and friends together. And in 1883, the family doesn't make it to Oregon. They end up in Montana and start a new life. And when I look back, by most accounts, my Ash Wednesday of 2023 was a bust. Don't get me wrong. My haircut and my eye doctor appointment went great. But as it turns out, I failed to find a labyrinth that wasn't packed with people that I couldn't even find a parking place close enough to get to it. And the Ash Wednesday service I decided to go to was in Spanish. Well, I probably would have known the tunes and understood what was trying to be said, they weren't real excited to see me. So if I was to check my Ash Wednesday off, I had too good and too bad. That's a 50%. That's not a good on a test. I pretty much failed Ash Wednesday of 2023. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you will return. Now I'm going to give you some pastoral care insider information. That same motion, to remember you are dust, and to dust you will return, is the same motion that is given when you're baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are named, you are God's own, you are loved with or without dirt on your face. And this is the new life, the life in Christ that gives us a whole new outlook of our days, our weeks, our vacations, and even our cakes. Lent might bring expectations of what you should do or what you should feel. If you have these thoughts, let them go. Practice centering yourself in love and let Lent be what it needs to be for each of us. Let's simply focus on showing up, fully present with God and for God becoming that outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. And maybe even doing the hokey pokey along the way. Will you pray with me for help? New every morning is your love, great God of light. And all day long you're working for good in this world. Stir up in us a desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors and all your creation, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our hymn of invitation this morning 
you can find it on page 593. Here I am, Lord. Please and stand. If, oh, and sorry. if you want to be a part of this hokey pokey dancing church, you have opportunities here and you can text can connect at 8327734901. Please stand and join me for the hymn of invitation. Here I am, Lord. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I, who made the stars of night, I will make the darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame, I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied, I will give my life to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Please be seated. At this time, let us reflect on this postlude played by Marva.
take this blessing. Go now. Go with the love of Christ. May it lead you, maybe beside you, to befriend you, maybe behind you to support you. But most of all, may the love of Christ be in you, that you share it with all the world. Amen and amen. Please stand. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Have a wonderful week.